Magandang araw sa inyong lahat. Welcome po sa ating online worship celebration. Kami po'y nagagalak na kayo ay aming makasama sa araw na ito at marinig po natin ang salita ng ating Panginoon. Ako nga po si Che Morales. At ako naman po si Ann Morales. Kami ay nananalangin ngayong umaga para sa inyo na kayong lahat kasama ang inyong mga pamilya ay healthy and safe. Kung kayo naman po ay may karamdaman, dinadalangin namin kayo and we declare that the Lord is mighty to heal your body. Ngayon pong araw ay special day para sa Lighthouse community dahil sineselebrate po natin ang Pastors and Staff Appreciation Sunday. We are blessed kami pong mag-asawa ay pinagpala ng Diyos sa ating mga pastors dahil sila po ay nag inspire sa amin to love the Lord more and to serve the community. I want to read from Matthew chapter 9, verse 35 to 36. Ang sabi po dito, Jesus went through all the towns and villages, teaching in their synagogues, proclaiming the good news of the kingdom, and healing every disease and sickness. When he saw the crowds, he had compassion on them, because they were harassed and helpless like sheep without a shepherd. Ganito po ang ministry ni Jesus habang siya ay nasa lupa. Nagtuturo, nangangaral, nagpapagaling, at gusto kong i-highlight ang verse 36 He was moved with compassion nang makita niya ang mga tao na habag siya, nadurog ang kanyang puso sapagkat sila litong lito at walang direksyon ang kanilang buhay. Parang mga tupa na walang pastol. Ganito din po ang buhay natin ngayon. Walang pagkakaiba sa kanila. We are helpless, harash. No direction in life. Kaya kailangan po natin ng mga pastor na magtuturo din sa atin, mag-aalaga sa ating kalagayang espiritual at magpapalapit sa ating Panginoon. Ang puso po ng Diyos ay mahabagin. Handa tayong iligtas, pagalingin, bigyan ng pag-asa at bigyan ng direksyon ang ating buhay. And this same compassion Ito pong compassion na to ang nagtawag sa ating Panginoon sa mga pastor natin so that they can shepherd us, turuan tayo at pangalagaan. They model to us how God shepherd His people. Kaya ngayon po, let us worship the Lord with gladness because He is good and faithful. And let us thank the Lord for our pastors and staff dahil sila po ay regalo ng Diyos sa ating community. Let us pray. Panginoon, salamat po sa magang ito. Salamat Panginoon sa lahat ng mga biyaya na ipinagkalubo po sa amin at aming pangtatanggapin sa darating na araw. Lord, kami po ay lumalapit sa iyo, nagpapasalamat sa lahat ng mga naranasan po namin. Kahit na po ito, Lord, ay mabigat sa aming uh, buhay, Panginoon. Tapat, Panginoon, ang iyong pangako na hindi mo kami iiwan at hindi mo kami pababayaan. Salamat, Panginoon, sa araw na ito na ipinagkalumog po sa amin. Bagong araw, Panginoon, para ikaw ay aming purihan at ibigay sa iyo ang lahat ng mataas na papuri. Salamat, Panginoon, sa umagang ito. Pinupuri ka namin at kami nagpapasalamat sa pangalan ni Jesus. Amen.
Haleluya, haleluya, haleluya. Ang kaligtasan, karangalan, kapangyarihan ay tangi sa iyo lamang o Diyos. Patuloy po kayo maghari sa aming mga puso, sa aming pamilya at sa buong Lighthouse Christian Community. Sinasamba ka namin o Diyos sa spirito at katotohanan. Tanggapin niyo po ang aming pagsamba at pasasalamat. Salamat po sa mga pagpapala na patuloy na pinagkakaloob niyo sa amin. In spite of our unfaithfulness, you continue to remain faithful. Salamat po sa patuloy na paglilinis mo sa aming mga kasalanan, sa isip, salita at gawa. Salamat sa pagpapagaling sa aming mga karamdaman. Ito man ay pisikal, emosyonal, mental, spiritual, or relasyon man. Thank you that we are still alive, na sa kabila ng ilang taong pandemic, patuloy mo po kaming pinoprotektahan, pinapalakas, at kinocover ng banal na dugo ng aming Panginoong Hesus. Purihin ka o Diyos sa iyong mga salita na nagbibigay ilaw at liwanag sa landas ng buhay. Tunay na ang pag-ibig at pagpapalang spiritual ay napakalawang, higit sa aming kayang hilingin at isipin. You are the one who adopted us into your family. Tubo sa amin sa magitan ng tugo ni Kristo Jesus. Nagpaunawa ng hiwaga ng iyong kalooban sa magitan ng iyong banal na spirito para ipagkaloob ang karunungan at katalinuhan. Salamat po sa pribilehyo na makalapit sa inyong trono. Thank you so much for being a prayer hearing God and a prayer answering God. We welcome the presence of your Holy Spirit in our midst. Dalangit po namin ang malaya mong pagkilo sa aming kalagitnaan. Katagpuin mo po ang bawat isa sa amin mula sa pinakabata hanggang sa pinakamatanda. Touch us, O Lord. Change us. Empower us for your glory. Sa mga personal at pangpamilyang kahilingan, hinataas po namin sa inyo, O Diyos, ang bawat kahilingan ng inyong mga anak. Kung ito man po ay kahilingan patungkol sa kalusugan o kagalingan sa mga may karamdaman, pangangailangang pinansyal, Pagkain sa araw-araw sa gitna ng nagtataas ang bilihin, naghahanap ng trabaho or negosyo man, continue to give us faith as big as the mustard seed so that we can say to this mountain, move from here to there and it will move. Tunay po na kayo ang aming Jehovah Jireh. Wala pong mahirap sa inyo. Walang imposible. We just have to believe. Nilalapit din po namin ang aming bayang Pilipinas. Salamat sa napakayaman naming kultura. Purihin ka o Diyos sa aming sariling wika, tugtugin, sayaw, pananamit at iba pa. Kayo po ang mayakda ng lahat ng ito. Tulungan niyo po kami maging mabuting tagapangisiwa nito. Itinataas po namin ang inyong anak na ang kapatid na binay. Magsalita po kayo sa amin sa magitan niya. Bayaan mo po ang iyong banal na spirito ang kumilos sa aming kalagitnaan, lalong-lalo na ang anak ninyo 
upang ang mensahe ng iyong bibigay sa amin sa magitan niya ay tumimo sa aming isipan, puso at damdamin at magbunga ng pagbabago sa aming buhay upang ikaw ay maparangalan. And most especially, O Lord, we lift up to you all our pastors and staff. Kilala niyo po silang lahat. Kayo po ang tumawag sa kanila. At sila po ay tumugon sa tawag mo, tanda ng kanilang pagmamahal sa iyo. Panalangin po namin ang iyong mayamang pagpapala sa kanilang lahat. Bless them beyond measure. You know the secret desires of their hearts, their dreams, and their needs. Tugunin mo po ang lahat ng ito. Kasama ang mga panalangin ng kanilang buong pamilya. Purihin ka o Diyos sa kanilang buhay at dedikasyon sa kanilang pagkatawag. Lubos po kami nagpapasalamat sa inyo sapagkat patuloy mo po silang ginagamit upang maging pagpapala sa aming lahat. You are the source of everything and they are resources that you have given us to teach, rebuke, correct, and train us in righteousness. Salamat po sa kanilang kalakasan at kalusugan. Salamat po sapagkat patuloy mo silang iniingatan at inilalayo sa anumang banta ng kaaway sa lahat ng oras. Sampu ng kanilang pamilya. Palibutan niyo po sila ng inyong mga anghel at ng inyong mga anak na magbibigay ng suporta at encouragement sa kanilang ministry. Salamat po at tinala mo kami muli sa bahay-sambahan na happy, healthy, and ready to honor all our pastors and staff through our love gifts, food to share, and words of affirmation. Purihin ka po, Diyos, sapagkat ang biyaya niyo po ay walang hanggan. Ito po ang aming dalangin at pagsamo sa matamis na pangalan ni Jesus. Amen. Good morning, Lighthouse. My name is Rufi Granada, a servant elder of Lighthouse Christian Community. And this is my beautiful wife, uh, Ma'am. Good morning. Uh, magpakilala ka naman. Magandang araw po ng Kapistahan, Lighthouse Family. Ako po naman si Ditas, ang butihing may bahay ng aking gwapong esposo. Ma'am, alam mo ba kung ano yung five languages of love at saka yung love tank? Ah, uh, o naman. Uh, lima daw ang languages of love na makakapuno ng love tank na minamahal mo. It's important to keep our love tank full to keep a good relationship. So, uh, ito yung limang yan. First one is words of affirmation. Uh, the second one is quality time. The third one is physical touch. And the uh, fourth one is act of service. And the last one is receiving gifts. At mahalagan, alam mo kung ano ang makakapuno sa love tank ng partner mo. Ako alam ko na ang love tank mo ay receiving gifts. Uh, na-appreciated ko ang service mo sa akin. Mukhang regalo po ako. <laughs> eh, ikaw naman, ako service. Kasi mm-hmm. po itong si Rufi, matimplahan ko lang siya ng coffee in the morning eh kinikilig na yan. Um, uh, lahat ng relationship ay may love tank na dapat punin ng different love languages. Uh, so why did you bring this up? Well, we'd like to welcome everyone to uh, to the church and to the pastors and staff appreciation worship service na nangyayari ngayon. The past year, especially with the pandemic, has challenged our pastors and staff in terms of spiritual and physical presence. And they have not failed us. Uh, the continuation of online services, the Bible studies, the region's mission work, Um, the different ministries, and most especially asking for personal and spiritual support uh, in our struggles as a congregation. And they have always been there for us, di ba? Remember, uh, nung kasagsagan ng COVID, na may, they sent ayudas to us na dineliver pa nila and how they organized the community pantries and even uh, delivered it to everyone, di ba? Nung nag-organize tayo ng community pantry, naalala mo dito sa Pilar, isa ang church sa tumulong. 
I'm sure we're not the only ones who were um, uh, given uh, yeah. an opportunity to be helped and touched spiritually, financially, emotionally, and materially by the church, by the pastors and staff. But alam natin na hindi naman sila superman na may letter S sa dibdib. Mm, right. Meron rin, humans rin sila na may flesh and blood. They have lab, lab tongues also na dapat punuin natin uh, ng different love languages. Today, we will have the opportunity to fill up their love tanks as a church. How do we do it? By showing our appreciation. Maybe we have a gift to offer or a card or a letter addressed to them, kahit a word of affirmation or even physical touch. Uh, even fist bumps or a word of thanks. I'm sure that would be sufficient and appreciated. Today, we will give it, be given that opportunity to do that. Since online tayo, isang comment sa ilalim o kaya isang chat ng thank you, TYBM. And then, alam niyo TYBM. <laughs> thank you very much. Kahit isang emoticon, uh, isang heart kaya, let's just show our heartfelt appreciation for our pastors and staff. Okay ba yan? Let's go! Let's go! <laughs> At this point, we'd also like to welcome our first-timers. You guys who have logged on and linked for the first time or even the second time, isang raise hands emoticon naman dyan para the church can appreciate that you joined us and so we can pray for you. Sige, uh, let's start. Let's pray. Our Heavenly Father, Lord, thank you that you have allowed their friends find their link and join their online service mm -hmm. there are no accidents for you Amen. lord jesus mm -hmm. you allow them to find us online for a reason your words does not come back empty Amen. Amen. may they come out changed by this online service all this lord we pray in jesus name in jesus Amen. name Amen. Amen. Another one that who longs for our relationship is God. He longs to have a fellowship with us. May love tank din tayong dapat punuin yes. para sa Diyos. Alam natin na hindi niya kailangan, pero sa Bible, he says that he longs for this relationship. As a matter of fact, in Genesis 4, 3 and 5, he even regarded the offerings of Cain and Abel. He looked in favor at the offering of Abel, and did not regard the offering of Cain. Allah, kinikilatis pala niya ang ating yes. mga love gifts at love offerings. At masaya siya kung ang best of the best ang ating ibinibigay na offering. He longs for us to show our appreciation in terms of our heart's condition. And giving tithes and in our worship service, he longs for that. Brothers and sisters, it's time to give. Let our offerings be regarded by our Lord. Let's pray. Thank you, Lord, for your blessings. Allow us to return to you a portion of your grace to show our appreciation and thankfulness. May it be a sweet-smelling aroma raising up to your throne. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. amen and amen. Here are the ways you can give. You can drop your tithes and offering at Lighthouse Center, Monday to Sunday at 8 a.m. to 7 p.m. You can also send your tithes and offering through digital giving. Union Bank. Metro Bank. Banco de Oro and RCBC If you're outside the Philippines, please send your donations through Remitly, Zoom, or Western Union using the following details Banco de Oro and PayPal
For confirmation, please send a screenshot of your transfer to lighthouse.alabang at gmail.com. The Lord bless you for being a faithful tither and a generous giver. Jesus said, There is no greater command than to love God with our all. All our heart, all our mind, all our strength, because God is love. Even though our all is not enough, loving God starts where you are, right now. Bloom Ladies Conference September 17, 2022 Magandang umaga po sa inyo lahat. Good morning, Lighthouse. It is an honor. It is a privilege. It is a joy to be asked to share the message for today. My name is Brother Vinay Panimanglor. I'm part of the morning service. And I just want to thank each and every one of you that went up front. Brother Che, Sister Anne, for the warm welcome that you gave to all of us as we entered the auditorium. For the pastoral prayer, Brother Pat, Sister Lynn, you have lifted our spirits. Brother Rufi, Sister Ditas, as you shared the message for the giving, for the tithes, we've been touched. We've been touched. I must say, that it has encouraged me to think hard about how much am I giving, am I giving sacrificially. Today, all of you have made this program a joy. How can I forget the worship leaders, the Levites, each and every, every one of you with talent that brings the singing, the joy, the very presence of God into the auditorium. Your voices blended, they're a joy. And I'm sure heaven above is pleased with the worship service that we are attending today. Today is a special day. Today is a day which is an honor for me to speak on because it is our pastor and staff appreciation day. Every year, Lighthouse has a tradition. And this is one tradition I enjoy. Christmas, New Year, Easter, we have all of these special services. But on this day, when we get to appreciate our pastors and the staff, it brings me great joy. Thank you, pastors. Thank you, the staff. Today, we thank you because of who you are in our lives. Without you, Lighthouse would not be where it is today. And we pray, we pray for you. We pray that in the years to come, you will bring Lighthouse to much, much greater heights. For the last 66 weeks, we have gone through the books of the Bible. Every single Sunday, one of the pastors came up front and shared from the Old Testament, from the book of Genesis, all the way down to the book of Revelation, 66 weeks of sharing the books of the Bible. We've heard from God's word. We have heard from the word of God, 66 books preached by our wonderful pastors. Each a lesson in itself, each a challenge to us. And pastors, I want to thank you. I want to thank you for the effort you made, whether it was the senior pastor, whether it was one of the young adults pastors, every single one of you has done enough to teach us, to mentor us, to challenge us and to bring the knowledge of the word deeper into our hearts.
But this morning, yes, we've heard so much from the word of God. I'm going to spend some time talking about God of his word. The title of my message is God of his word because we today are going to see through a unique character in the Bible, an amazing character in the Bible. What presence of God made to his life. How it challenged him, how it moved him to greater heights. And without much further ado, I am going to introduce to you that character. In Hebrews chapter 11 and verse 1, it says, Now faith is confidence in what we hope for and assurance about what we do not see. This is what the ancients were commended for. And this morning, we are going to talk about one of the heroes of the faith, as this chapter is very popularly known. We are going to talk about one of those heroes of the faith. Abraham. A B R. A.M. as he was referred to in the beginning chapters of the book of Genesis. The theme of this morning's message is faith and faithful. Who was Abraham? Let's turn to the book of Genesis in chapter 12. That's the first time we get to meet Abraham, in chapter 12, uh, I am one of those that preached many, many years ago. So I am not a laptop person. For me, God's word, God's word is in the book. And this morning, you have to bear with me. Those of you techies, those of you new gen, bear with me. Because I am going to be opening the book and read from God's word. Let's read together. In chapter 12, we just hear in the first verse, the Lord had said to Abraham. I'm going to stop here. And I'm going to share who was Abraham. Okay? If you look to, through the scriptures, there's not very much mentioned about him prior to this particular scripture. He just comes it just comes into our, our presence when God says, the Lord said to Abraham. Abraham is a primary example of Jewish faith. Abraham was a friend of God. And as I shared the message today, you'll find out how good a friend of God he was and how much of a good friend God was to him. His father and grandfather unfortunately, worshipped false gods. We have no idea whether it was pagans, statues, whatever it was, they worshipped false gods. Abraham was married. And he was married to his half-sister, Sarai. S-A-R-A-I. I'm using the spellings now because they, they play a great significant part in the journey of Abraham and his walk with God. Abraham lived in a place called Ur, U-R. In today's present geographic situation, it is a town, still exists, in Baghdad, the capital of Iraq. About 300 kilometers away from Baghdad, Ur still exists. What do we know about Abraham? He could have been a merchant doing business. It tells us that it has, he had great wealth. We presume it was because of his uh, being a merchant. He also had great livestock, number of flocks and herds of livestock. 
and obviously that also meant that abraham knew quite a lot about shepherding so he is a merchant he is a shepherd and evidently well educated and a wise man this is what we know about abraham so far and thank you uh, for google because it allowed me to find out a little bit more prior to what we just read in the scripture let's go back Today we look at Abraham's story. It is a wonderful story of faith. Genesis chapter twelve, verse one: The Lord had said to Abraham, "Go from your country, your people, and your father's household to the land I will show you. I will make you into a great nation, and I will bless you, Abraham. I will make your name great, and you will be a blessing. I will bless." those who bless you and whoever curses you abraham i will curse and all peoples on earth will be blessed through you verse 4 so abraham went as the lord had told him let's stop here what a man what an interesting man but before i go forward Let's go back to the book of Hebrews. That's where we started in Hebrews chapter eleven. In chapter chapter eleven, verse seventeen, uh, sorry, uh, verse eight to verse ten, it says, "By faith, Abraham, when called to go to a place he would late, later receive as his inheritance, obeyed and went, even though he did not know where he was going." by faith he made his home in the promised land like a stranger in a foreign country he lived in tents as did isaac and jacob who were heirs with him of the same promise for he was looking forward to the city with foundations whose architect and builder is god two things we learn by faith Abraham obeyed in verse 8 it tells us in Hebrews chapter 11 obeyed and went out not knowing where he was going he did not question he did so just told to go he went in verse 9 it says by faith Abraham made his home as a stranger in the promised land a man of great wealth who probably lived in mansions now lives in a tent out in the hot desert what obedience what trust in god abraham has because abraham was a friend of god and he do when god speaks and tells him or asks him you just do again in genesis chapter 12 verses 1 and 4 in verses 1 and 2 we see that instant obedience and trust god calls abraham obeys leaves his land does not know where his destination is his country his riches his land just taking with him the bare minimum his family only his wife sarai his nephew lot a few Hundred people, maybe that's all he had, and he set out. Now we know the destination. He set out for the land of Canaan. Ur to Canaan. Abraham, Sarai, Lot, a few hundred people. The distance between these two cities was two thousand four. Hundred kilometers. God was asking a huge, huge thing of Abraham: get into the desert, leave the comforts, walk two thousand four hundred meters, the two thousand four hundred kilometers. It's mind-boggling. That's a long distance in the desert, the hot sun, walking, walking, walking. I wouldn't, I wouldn't even try. to imagine how long it must have taken him the desert is not a very friendly place mind you 
it is hot, it is cold, it has all kinds of creatures for sure. That would be a hindrance, that would be dangerous as they walked along. But we see, and it tells us here, that when he set out, Abraham was 75 years old. Picture that. Church, my brothers, my sisters, picture that, 75 years old. Not a young man. Abraham was already into his 70s, but without a question at that point of time, he stepped out. Strong faith, trust and obey. That's what we see in Abraham's character. This is a man of what I call immense faith. Cultivating faith is what we are talking about. As we go forward, we'll see what kind of challenges Abraham goes through. That's the beginning of chapter 12. A little later, it tells us that he's reached Canaan. And like I said, it may have taken him a couple of months. It could have taken him a year, maybe a little bit more. But in verse 10, it tells us that where he was. Now, there was a famine in the land and Abraham went to Egypt to live there for a while because the famine was severe. Leaving a land, walking through the desert, he gets to Canaan. There's famine. He goes to Egypt. And as he arrives, this is in verse 10, as he arrives in Egypt, in, it tells us there was a famine. Abraham went down to Egypt to live there for a while because the famine was severe. As he was about to enter Egypt, he said to his wife, Sarah, I know what a beautiful woman you are. When the Egyptians see you, they will say, this is his wife. Then they will kill me, but let you live. Say you are my sister, so that I will be treated well for your sake, and my life will be spared because of you. What does it tell us about Abraham's faith? He is quite a scheming man. He has no hesitation in being very giving of his wife. You're beautiful. Is that a compliment? Did he mean it as a compliment? No way. He was taking advantage of the fact. And uh, mind you, Sarai was just 10 years younger than him. She was 65. Still a beautiful woman. No doubt about it. The Bible tells us that she was a beautiful woman. But Abraham sees that there could be a challenge to his life. There could be a threat to his life, to his well-being. So he's willing to sacrifice his wife. Deceptive. A man who left his comforts in Ur, in Ur walk 2,400 kilometers. A man of strong faith, a famine, and moving to Egypt. Look what happens. What do we see about Abraham here? Do we see that strong faith? Yes, in some ways we do. But what we see more is the deception. He's willing to be deceptive. And then the story goes on. It tells us that the men of Egypt, the Pharaoh's men, came around. They saw this lady was wonderful, beautiful. Uh, I'm sure 
in Cuento Cuento with uh, Abraham. He said, oh, that's my sister. Yes, yeah, she's beautiful. No doubt about it. Yes, what would you like to do? Oh, Pharaoh likes lovely women. He likes beautiful woman, women. Okay. Okay. This is Abraham. She goes and she's in the palace of the uh, Pharaoh. But in verse 17, it tells us, but the Lord inflicted serious diseases on Pharaoh and his household because of Abraham's wife, Sarai. So Sarah, Pharaoh summoned Abraham, what have you done to me? He said, why didn't you tell me she was your wife? Why did you say she is my sister? So they took, took her to be my wife. Now then, here's your wife, take her, go. And then the Pharaoh gave orders about Abraham to his men and said, send them out, send them packing, let them go. He sent him on his way with his wife and everything he had. What a deceptive man. What are we talking about here? Cultivating faith. I, look at the uh, graph that we are doing. By faith, Abraham obeyed and went. Abraham compromises. Faith somewhere here. Slide down. Does it sound familiar, brothers, sister? One day your faith is so great, you're jumping in joy because God's done something that you prayed for or asked for or gave you a promotion, whatever it might be, your faith increases. You are all excited. And then comes a challenge. Then comes a situation like this. Abraham compromised and was deceptive. Sliding down. The story goes on. It's a long story. We're going to talk about almost 100 years of uh, Abraham's life. But it's an interesting story about faith. Bear with me. Listen to a story of a man who will convict you at the very end. We move forward. Genesis chapter 15. We don't hear much about Lot after this, and uh, in a way, it's more exciting. In Genesis 15, this is the Lord's covenant with Abraham. We're talking about cultivating faith. Friends, Lighthouse, brothers, sisters, those of you watching online, stay with the story, stay with this line, because this is getting interesting now. You must be asking yourself, what's happening here? Brother Vinay is talking about ups and downs. Yes, it is, because this is the story of Abraham's faith. In Genesis 15, the Lord's covenant with Abraham, God comes back. God, his friend, Abraham, God's friend, Connect again. After this, the word of the Lord came to Abraham in a vision. Do not be afraid, Abraham. I am your shield. You are very great reward. Verse 2, but Abraham said, Sovereign Lord, what can you give me since I remain childless and the one who will inherit my estate is Eliza of Damascus. And Abraham in verse 3 said, you have given me no children, so a servant in my household will be my heir. Here's God in verse 2 saying, I am your shield, your very great reward. And Abraham starts to complain. He says, I'm childless. I'm 75 plus plus. It's been a couple of years since I've started on my this long walk. I'm still childless. We're getting old. We are old. And you're going on telling me that I, you, 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 there is a great reward. I'm childless. What does God do? In verse 4 it says, Then the word of the Lord came to him, This man will not be your heir, but a son who is your own flesh and blood will be your heir. He took him outside and said, Look up at the sky, count the stars. If indeed you can count them, 
And then he said to him, then he said to Abraham, so shall your offspring be. Ups, downs, lying. And God comes back and says, Abraham, Abraham, come on. Complaining about being childless. I am going to give you a child. This is a covenant. Verse 6. Good friends again. Abraham believed the Lord and he credited it to him as righteousness. Abraham believed the Lord. Believed the Lord. Looking out at the stars, being told that his offspring will be so. So meaning if there's billions of stars, that's the kind of offspring Abraham is going to have. For a man who's in his late 70s to picture having a baby at that point of time. Great hope. He's convinced. He's convicted. He says, yes, this is God, my friend. And he says, okay, when the sun had set and so on and so forth, Abraham remembers. Because Lord had made a covenant and said to your descendants, I will give this land. And he had named all the lands and the cities and towns and nations that he would give to Abraham. And in that was the promise of a child. I can picture Abraham. He goes back to Sarai and says, honey, I had a talk. My good friend, the Lord spoke to me. He said, we are going to have a child. Sarah, very practical woman that she is, she knows that her body is in no condition, nor is it in any state where she could have a child. She is barren. And she looks at Abraham, probably thinking in her mind, what's this old man thinking about? Is he, is he kind of okay? And in chapter 16, it tells us now Sarai, Hagar and Ishmael, the title of that chapter. In chapter 16 and verse 1, Sarai, Abraham's wife, had borne him no children, but she had an Egyptian slave, Hagar. So she said to Abraham, the Lord has kept me from having children. Go sleep with my slave. Perhaps I can build a family through her. Husband and wife seem to have some kind of a fascination to give each other away to another partner. Abraham messed up when he shared Sarai to the Pharaoh. Now here is Sarai returning the favor by saying, Abraham, I have a slave, Hagar. Maybe it's not me, Baron Sarai. Maybe it's this young lady, the slave, who is going to be the mother of the child. Abraham, God's friend. doesn't understand the covenant or decides to take an easy way out. He says, agreed to what Sarai said. He took her Egyptian slave, slept with her. Miracle. She conceived. Hagar became pregnant with Abraham's child. Lack of faith encouraged in the earlier chapter by the covenant God had signed with him. One chapter later. Lack of faith, second guessing, both husband and wife, Abraham and Sarah, is second guessing what God's plans are. How often, church, do we do that? How often do you, me, do that? We have a preconceived idea about what we want in our life. And we pray. And we pray and say, Lord, this is what I want. I want a promotion. I want a raise. I want a new job. I need to have a baby. Time is running out. People are asking me. There are different things that we ask for. We get on our knees. We're asking God. Is that the asking faith that we have? 
second guessing trying to put in god's mind god this is our plan do you agree with that and in this case god had given them his plan now they are making a second guess oh did he really mean sarai from your body hagar is pregnant and in the first few months of her pregnancy what happens she is pregnant and you know that when a woman gets pregnant the hormones go out of control those of you the married husbands know that the ones with children you know when the wife is pregnant in this case it was not even the wife it was hagar that was pregnant she got cranky she got moody she started to feel bitter she thought you know who is sarai she started to despise her mistress that's what the scripture says she started to dis- despise the mistress 86 year old abraham the first so called miracle in his life has a son out of hagar the slave woman and names him ishmael but brother sister church this is not the son of his promise what do we learn about abraham here what are his weaknesses he's deceptive we know that he has a lack of faith at times he has a lack of love for his wife these are just some of his weaknesses what is god up to cultivating faith once again abraham has reached the depths it life looks like a spiral to him a roller coaster it's much worse than a roller coaster a ro- roller coaster goes on gentle curves abraham's life seems to be going in these inverted triangles triangles whatever shape that you might want to put to it this is what his life is like but he has his strengths interestingly this is the man with outstanding faith he's 86 years old he's unselfish with his nephew when he divided the land he was unselfish he was a worshipper at every place that he stopped and halted at he built an altar got on his knees and prayed and worshiped this was a man who was worshipful he was persevering he was persevering and he was prayerful extremes he has his strengths he has his weaknesses this is what we know about abraham and each of us brother sister we have the same kind of qualities we have our strengths we have our weaknesses and god is working in our lives every single moment yes you will fail you will look up to the heavens he will lift you up your faith from zero he will elevate it god will elevate and abraham is a classic example of that genesis 17 the covenant of circumcision pay attention here now pay attention here the chapter is quite long but in verses 1 to 7 it says when abraham abraham was 99 years old we started his journey when he was 75 24 years later the lord appeared to him again and said i am god almighty walk before me faithfully and be blameless verse 2 then i lord said will make my covenant between me and you and abraham you will greatly increase in numbers abraham fell face down he says my friend is back and god said to him as for me this is my covenant with you you will be the father 
of many nations. No longer will you be called Abraham. Your name will be Abraham. And H added, for I have made you a father of many nations. A father of many nations. I will make nations of you and the kings will come from you. Look at God's promise again to a man who has failed him repeatedly, who has gone on his knees and said, Lord, help. He's lifted him up again. You see now. And God doesn't stop there. He doesn't stop there. In verse 5, when he said, I will make you the father of all nations. Yes, it is very true. You know what, brothers and sisters? Abraham, in many ways, is the spiritual father of all believers. Up until this day, today we are here watching this program online or sitting in the auditorium. Abraham is the spiritual father of lighthouse believers, worshippers in every nation. He is the spiritual father. This is the friendship that God shared with Abraham. God doesn't stop just there. He, in verse 15, God also said to Abraham, as for Sarai, your wife, you are no longer to call her Sarai. Her name will be Sarah. That's a beautiful name, Sarah. Her name will be Sarah. I will bless her and will surely give you a son by her. I will bless her so that she will be the mother of nations. Kings of peoples will come from her. This is a joint venture. God is telling Abraham, this is a joint venture. You're the father. She is the mother of nations and the kings will come. And it's true. It's true. We worship today on our knees the same God that made this covenant with Abraham. Verse 19, and this is the one that really lifts up my spirits. When I read this scripture, I get goosebumps. Then God said, yes, but your wife Sarah will bear you a son and you will call him Isaac. I did not read verses 17 and 18 because typical of Abraham, he fell face down and said, I'm an old man and how will I get a son? My wife is 90 years old, I'm 100 years old, so on and so forth. But God says, no, 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 no. Yes, your wife Sarah will bear you a son and you will call him Isaac. You know what Isaac means? Happiness. The translation of the word Isaac is happiness. We talk about being happy. 100 years old, 90 years old. You are told by God, you will have a son and you will name him happy because he is going to bring happiness into your lives. God chose one man, one family, one nation. And through that, he made his covenant, an everlasting covenant with Abraham. And through that man, through his family, through the nation of Israel, that covenant, everlasting covenant, is still intact even till this day in our church. And it's not going to stop here. Going forward for the years to come, for the generations to come, to every single believer, this is the covenant. Cultivating faith, ups, downs, ups, downs, challenges, trials, whatever it is, nothing compared to what's in store for us going forward. Why was God doing this? 
Why was God doing this? He was preparing Abraham. He was preparing Abraham, teaching Abraham to trust God. If God gives you his word, all he wants from you and me is to trust him. Trust him, obey him, allowing Abraham to experience a few hurdles, helping him, encouraging him, lifting him up, rescuing him, getting him ready for much more. Remember, for each one of us, a cultivating faith is a time of being prepared, a time of learning. It's a time where we are being prepared by God for something much better. And interestingly, it could be something much, much more challenging. Challenging faith, cultivating faith. Abraham has gone through enough. We've seen that he had his ups, he had his downs. Comes a time. And we move forward in Genesis chapter 21 in verses 1. Now the Lord was gracious to Sarah, as he had said. And the Lord did for Sarah what he had promised. Sarah became pregnant, bore a son to Abraham in his old age at the very time God had promised him. Abraham gave the name Isaac to the son. Sarah bore him. When his son Isaac was eight days old, Abraham circumcised him as God commanded him. Abraham was a hundred years old when his son Isaac was born to him. 25 years practically to the day the child of the promise is born. 100 years old. The child grew and was weaned. But Sarah said, God has brought me laughter. And everyone who hears about this will laugh with me. And then she added, who would have said to Abraham that Sarah would nurse children, yet I have borne him a son in his old age. That's the second miracle. A 90-year-old woman is breastfeeding her child. Church. Who would have believed this? At 90 and 100, parents breastfeeding, no formula milk, no milk substitutes, no nothing. Breastfeeding, this is the promised son. And I can picture Abraham and Sarah delighted. The little boy carry him, cuddle him, take turns, you know. Uh, making sure that he was taken care of well, enjoying when he had his first steps, enjoying when he said his first words, enjoying when he fell down, had a few bruises, cried, they lifted him up. They became so enamored by him, so caught up with him, that their hearts, their lives, their days were filled with Isaac, happiness. This was what this young lad was. And surely, as the days passed, as the years passed, as the young man, as the young boy became a teenager, became a, a little older, as he reached nearing his 20s, Abraham's heart, the shrine where God demands and expects to be in, was slowly but surely being substituted by the Son. It happens to all of us. God's answered our prayer. We've got what we wanted. God's kept his part. What happens? Slowly but surely, we have those days when we just say, okay, God, thank you. Salamat po. Thank you, Lord. After that, God is not there anymore in the shrine. Something else has substituted. And in this case, Isaac, the apple of their hearts and their minds and their very living beings, 
they were consumed by it. Is it wrong to love your child, your only child? He's growing up, he's still the only child. Was it wrong? As doting parents, we've, we've done that. We've done that with our children, the first, the second, the third, in this case, the only child. They poured everything, Abraham poured everything into taking care, into teaching him, you know, bonding with him. But God steps in, in a very, very, very interesting way. Why do I title this particular seg segment, Challenging Faith? In chapter 22, let me pick up God's word. Sometime later, God tested Abraham. He said to him, Abraham, here I am, he replied. Then God said, take your son, your only son, whom you love, Isaac, and go to the region of Moriah. Sacrifice him there as a burnt offering on a mountain. I will show you. God, what's going on? Your only son. God said your only son. God acknowledges this is your only son. God acknowledges whom you love, Abraham, Isaac, happiness, and go. Do what? Sacrifice him. Sacrifice. Are, are we connecting properly, Lord? God has brought him. God has brought Abraham to life's defining moment. Every single one of us goes through one of these moments, life's defining moments. When you're shocked, when you're taken aback, it could be a health condition, it could be a financial condition, it could be an emotional condition, it could be a natural calamity. It brings us suddenly looking and up and saying, what's happening? God has brought him to the point where Abraham's next steps, what Abraham is going to do next, will define who he actually is in terms of his character. Church, brothers, sisters, we will be faced many times prayerfully not as seriously, as challenging as being asked to sacrifice your child. But there will be those times. Faith. Abraham's faith is being challenged. But in verse 3, in verse 3, early the next morning, Abraham got up, loaded his donkey, he took with him two of his servants, his son Isaac. When he had cut enough wood for the burnt offering, he set out for the place God had told him about. On the third day, Abraham looked up. Abraham's being tested, no doubt about it. And look at his reaction. He just does what God, his friend, has told him. Take your son, so on and so forth. He does exactly that. Early the next morning, child of the covenant, child of the promise, now 20 years old, give him back to me, says the Lord to Abraham. What a dilemma. I wouldn't want to be faced with a dilemma like this. I have two sons. If he was to say, I want the little finger of one of your sons, I would panic. But yes, God, Abraham's trial by fire, honestly, it's by fire. This is what I'm saying, a life-defining moment, a challenging moment. 
but let's look at what what must have gone on the old man now 120 years old 75 year olds went through enough 100 years old gets a baby we think that's you know the end of the journey for abraham 120 years old this is the dilemma what must be going on in abraham's mind let's look at what's going on through abraham's mind at this point of time okay remember he's well educated up here very intelligent maybe we can reason with god maybe i can talk to god you know have a quento quento you know god come on buddy buddy style can we talk can we discuss this some more maybe you don't really mean a burnt offering you don't mean a sacrifice of burnt offering no 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 why not me why not me i'm 120 years old i'm old i mean i'd love to see my son grow up after me why don't you take me you said that he is going to be the father he is the only son of the seed the covenant remember the everlasting covenant you talked about god it's going to end here i am 120 years old why don't you just take me lord spare me spare him take me silence lord i have never dealt with a situation like this before yes for sure god didn't ask you to lose your sacrifice your child why me why my son why do this to my family these are the things this intelligent man is thinking through gets a little maybe he gets a little you know angry he says this is not right lord you said through abraham the nations as through isaac the nations the stars the you made me count the stars and i could not and you said i would have descendants and now you want me to murder him let's be blunt about these things lord yes i'm plain doing plain speak you are asking me to take my 20 year old son lay him out offering murder him what must be his emotions what could be going on in abraham's heart 120 year old man what do i tell sara the woman who weaned who carried isaac and now i'm going to tell her god my friend has told me sacrifice him or am i going to you know become the abraham of old and say oh we're just going for a three day camping trip bonding time father and son just one donkey a couple of servants to help us uh yeah sure i'm carrying firewood i'm carrying a little things because you know we may need to have a meal or something like that you know emotions what do i tell sara what do i tell isaac son we are going out we are going together what do i say to the servants these are some of the things that must have been going on in this old man's mind but he doesn't hesitate it tells us early the next morning he got up loaded his donkey took his servants took the son took enough wood and set out as he's walking the journey as he's walking as he's trudging along and the land around moriah where he was being asked to go is not plain uh, flat land it's mountainous it's climbing and for a man of that age with that kind of a burden in his mind he is asked to walk 3 days trudging up to the region of moraya at his age each step a challenge the journey is getting longer the steps are getting shorter agonizing each moment each minute bringing him closer to that final moment sacrifice my son isaac chapter 22 verse 5 he said to his servant stay here with the donkey while i and the boy 
go over there we will worship and then we will come back to you even as his mind his heart his intellect his emotions his very human nature is being challenged abraham shows his faith is it desperation and he feels that god's made his promise and god's going to work a solution out for, out, out of this maybe but that's that's not evident he can't see it with his eyes but with his faith maybe he can abraham's trial by fire is honestly a challenge that none of us want to face and i want to share about these kind of moments these kind of challenges coming into our lives and believe me brother sister pastor staff lighthouse the community each and every one of us comes to these kind of defining moments look at our pastors look at our staff they're here sitting in front of us they're as human as us look at the challenges that they've gone through some of them staff pastors have lost their spouse have lost their spouse illness sudden long suffering they have lost their spouse amongst the, the congregation we are members you lost a partner you lost a spouse you lost a child why my son why did this have to happen to my son why did this have to happen to my wife why did this happen to my husband god where are you why 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 these challenges have happened it can happen to any one of us there are other challenges not just health not just losing a spouse we have members of of the of the staff or including a pastor who went through a similar experience an accident a terrible vehicle accident no idea why would it happen to this individual but it happened you know what church they are all here they are all here having trusted god having obeyed god they are here and these are the pastors these are the members of the staff that have taken these challenges faced up to them had faith challenging faith no doubt and stayed firm with god worship first time in chapter 22 verse 5 do we find this word in scripture worship abram does as he has been told he goes on and the story continues and tells us he prepares an altar look at what's happening look at the screen the son helps him put together the stones lays out the firewood abraham sets him on that what i would call the funeral pyre ties him there must be questions now in isaac's mind what's happening 
Dad, you said we were coming here to worship. We were coming here to sacrifice. Me? Me? Tears pouring down their eyes, Father, knowing that this is his moment of truth. Look at his hands. Raised above. Dagger in his hands. A burnt offering. Wait. Why does he have a dagger in his hands? It's meant to be a burnt offering. Maybe. Abraham felt. Plunged that dagger into Isaac. He's already dead. And then light the fire. My son may not feel the pain. Maybe that's something that's in his mind. But that's not what God was asking. Sacrifice is a high, a holy moment. The best offering Abraham could give to God. Abraham's trial by fire and Bishop A.W. Tozer quotes it wonderfully. He says, Abraham's trial by fire, he did not fail in the crucible. Let me briefly touch on this one. I'm a student of chemistry. We used a crucible many a time in our uh, laboratory work. And a crucible can take up to almost 600 degrees centigrade in heat. It, it can take that kind of a heat. That was the kind of trial Abraham was going through. And he did not fail. There he is. Hands up there, dagger in hand, the worship all done, ready to sacrifice. Challenging faith, brothers, sisters, Abraham was going through a moment that none of us would have wanted to. But we've gone through many of those. Businesses have gone sour, businesses have gone bankrupt. You've lost your jobs, maybe one year down, you're still jobless. You applied and applied and you don't have a reply. Maybe a broken relationship. You're wondering why. Maybe something more personal, a health issue. And you know your days are limited. Again, the why question. Challenging faith. is followed by a conquering faith. Let's stay with Genesis chapter 22 and in verse 11. But the angel of the Lord called out to him from heaven, Abraham, Abraham, here I am. Do not lay a hand on the boy, he said. Do not do anything to him. Now I know that you fear God because you have not withheld from me your son, your only son. I am trying to picture Abraham's hand up here, the knife in his hand, and something grabs his hand and says, Abraham, Abraham. And he says, here I am. Do not lay a hand on the boy. He is fighting that. He is fighting that. He says, God has told me to sacrifice him. God has told me to sacrifice him. But the hand is being held. Three days. The heavenly silence was broken. For three days God was silent after telling him Abraham, take your son sacrifice him. The heavenly silence was broken. <clears throat> God spoke. God spoke to his friend. In verse 13 the heavenly solution was seen. Abraham saw 
turned around, looked up there in the thicket. He saw a ram caught by its horns. He went over, took the ram, sacrificed it as a burnt offering instead of his son. Church, brothers, sisters, the heavenly solution was seen. The silence was broken. The solution was seen just at the very right time. Just when we think, and Abraham had thought, God has pushed me into a corner. God answers. God will answer. God has answered. Verse 14. So Abraham called that place the Lord will provide. And to this day, it is said, on the mountain of the Lord, it will be provided. The silence broken, the solution seen, God's provision. The Lord will provide. Church, We've looked at cultivating faith. We've looked at challenging faith. We've looked at conquering faith. What do we learn here? What do we learn from this exhortation? <clears throat> the faithfulness of God's promise, the faith Abraham has shown. Abraham's faith God is faithful. Our faith, God is faithful and his faithfulness will show. This is a man who showed God and to us that God will always be first in his life. That's a wonderful lesson to learn. Who is first in your life? Netflix? A sports hero? The love of your life? Abraham showed. The first thing, the first love in his life was God. A man who had everything is now surrendering it all a surrendering faith understand church at every challenging serious test of our faith our relationship can with god can go two ways one is the challenge troubles you so much that you sink and you walk away from god the other one, even more exciting, is that you get closer and more intimate with God than at any other time. Time and again, you've seen, you get on your knees, you pray, you connect with God, the tears flowing, you surrendered, you told God, I have no idea where the solution is going to come from. God sees your faithfulness. God sees your faithfulness. And that's the relationship that you can see from Abraham. Matthew chapter 16, verse 24 to 25. Then Jesus said to his disciples, whoever wants to be my disciple must deny themselves and take up their cross and follow me. For whoever wants to save their life will lose it. But whoever loses their life for me will find it. This is what Abraham showed. That he was willing to lose it all and follow. That's the story. That's the story, church. Harsh, challenging, bitter experiences will surely be followed by God's blessedness. Unless we take that step of faith, church, 
how will we know that god is faithful we have to take that step abraham did it abraham showed us and through the heroes of the faith in chapter 11 of hebrews there are so many many other heroes named by name it talks about abraham talks about noah it talks about enoch it talks about so many others so many that the author says that there are so many heroes of the faith there is no place for me to name them and describe why they are the heroes of the faith and in, included in those names is names like david and these are the ancients we have the present day heroes of the faith in the new testament we have peter we have john we have the 12 disciples one of them turned out to be not a hero but somebody who betrayed the lord we have paul somebody that went after the early believers and god came to him with a solution and saul became the apostle paul these are some examples in our church look around you today we are here church to appreciate our pastors we are here to appreciate our staff today for us each and every one of them is a hero of the faith <clears throat> every single one of them there's around 35 of them unbelievable heroes of the faith they're human just like us but they toil they work hard they get on their knees and pray for us we put in those prayer requests they're on their knees praying there's a death in the family there's a there's an illness there is a dedication there are joyful times there are happy times the pastors are there the silent heroes of the faith the staff some of them you see in the congregation some of them when they're up front they're singing uh, with the levites many of them you don't even notice sitting in the media at the back they're there i don't want to name any one of them because for me they are equally heroes of the faith if i was to ask you you would probably know maybe 10 names 15 names some of you maybe 20 but do you know all of them today is the day to recognize these heroes of our faith they are here they are here and in time in a short time you'll get a chance to come up front and greet them don't all of you go to just one person because you know he's good looking he's very well spoken or this person is close to me i don't know who that other person is take time to get to know that hero of the faith they for us are heroes of the faith who else church every single one of you gathered here today is a hero of the faith yes you are each and every one of you is here you are here to help the pastors know and the staff know they are appreciated you know what god appreciates you god appreciates you you are a hero of the faith we will listen to the story of abraham cultivating faith challenging faith conquering faith i want to make this a little bit more personal my last point compelling faith and we are going to change the tempo a little bit conquering faith victory challenging faith testing testings cultivating faith training compelling faith what am i talking about one just one hero character whatever term you might want to use went through a challenge 
far more. And in the book of Matthew, we'll pick it up in chapter 26. There is only one mortal man that we know, you know, I know, all of us know, that went through a challenge far, far, far more than what Abraham went through. In the Garden of Gethsemane, you see in verse 36 to verse 38, Jesus is on his knees, sorrowful and troubled. He is on his knees, the Son of God, the Son of Man, on his knees, praying to the Father. Why is he praying? In verse 38, he says, My soul is overwhelmed with sorrow to the point of death. Stay here and keep watch with me. In verse 39, it says, Going a little further, he fell with his face to the ground and prayed, My father, if it is possible, may this cup be taken from me. Yet, not as I will, but as you will. The disciples who were with him, who, who had come with him while he was praying, had no idea what the prayer was all about. But you and I, brother, sister, we've read through. We've read this book. We've read through this prayer. We've read through his agony to the point where it, in some versions in the other uh, Gospels, it says that, you know, his sweat turned into droplets of blood. He was in a crisis, an intense moment, praying in asking his father to take the cup away. And you and I know what we was talking about. Jesus was on his knees. And in chapter 27, in chapter 27, on the cross, nailed to the cross church for you, for me, for all of us. Nails that pierced his hands, pierced his ankles, died, bleeding, suffering. And in verse 46, Jesus cries out. What does he cry out? Eli, about three in the afternoon, Jesus cried out in a loud voice, Eli, Eli, lema sabachthini, which means, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? In verse 50, it tells us, and when Jesus had cried out again in a loud voice, he gave up his spirit. Church, our God, our Father, on that day, did not hold back the knife. That hand that held back the knife from going and plunging into the body of Isaac, on this day, was plunged into the body of Jesus. Our God, our Father, did not hold back the knife. It was plunged into Jesus' body. He gave us this sacrifice so that we could be saved. Our Lord came not to destroy, but to save. This is compelling faith. All of us have acknowledged the agony starting with the prayer in Gethsemane to the challenge on this on the cross. We acknowledge the agony. We have accepted and that he died. And that he died on the cross. And on the third day, it, Jesus rose again. Promised in the Bible. Promised to his disciples that he will rise again. 
Jesus rose again. He defeated death. He destroyed Satan's notion of power. He overcame it all for us, church, for you, for me, for every believer. He came and he conquered. Shame, sorrow, sin, all of it, all of it on the shoulders of our Savior. Church, this is our God of the Word. <clears throat> this is the God of Abraham. This is the God of Isaac. This is the God of Jacob. This is the God of David. This is the God of Peter, Paul. This is the God of all of us. Compelling faith challenges us. And reminds us that this is our God, the great I am. And Father, how grateful we are that you have spoken. That you have used thine humble servant to share not mine. But thine words, Lord, you have spoken. And we are grateful. Faith. How often we use that word. Today, we know the faith of Abraham. We know the sacrifice of Jesus. And we know that we are the beneficiaries. We thank you, Lord. We are grateful. We thank you for the pastors. We thank you for the staff. We thank you for every single listener here in the auditorium, those online. We thank you. We thank you. We thank you, Lord. Blessed be thy name, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. If you have been touched today by this word, by God's word, if God has spoken to your hearts, and I speak to all of you, wherever you are in the comfort of your home, whether you're at your workplace, whether at whatever location you are online, sitting in a cafe, wherever you are, If you've been touched, and I know you have been touched by God's word, Abraham's faith, God's word, Jesus' sacrifice, if you have a prayer request, if you have any need whatsoever, just look at the screen. There is a QR code there. Just take a photo of that. Just send us our pastors, our elders, our intercessors will call you. You can answer if you just want a prayer. Amen. We will ask God for His benefits, His blessings, and His faithfulness to answer your prayers. We will have a song of worship now. Go ahead. Send those messages. Fill up the airwaves with your messages. Whatever it is, God has an answer for you. Thank you. Kahit ako'y nangangamba, basta't 
Thank you. 